Hello everybody, welcome back to Techno V YouTube channel for another episode of Tech News. And for today's tech news will be a bit of an odd one. We will have a more fruity selection of news to share today as many things have happened over the past few days so let's start off today's tech news with one for the die-hard apple fans out there i know you're watching this i know you're watching this and you like apple so much and you're probably asking when or where would the iphone flip or the iphone foldable phone will come out well good news for you guys out there they the iphone flip has just leaked by john poser if you don't know what who's john poser he usually gives off leaks and of new phones right now and what recently on twitter he leaked about the iphone flip and what it would have is that Apple is actually working on a foldable phone but not the foldable phone that you usually think. Now you just you have two types of foldable phones. You have the Samsung Fold which is basically a book design and you have the Samsung Z Flip and the Motorola Razr. Now those phones actually fold in half. Half where they fold vertically half while the Samsung Fold fold horizontally half so those two things are totally different what the what the way that apple wants to do this is with so the after a trifold design so that means it will have two separate displays with each other acting in tandem okay so basically i like the same but act, they're acting in tandem instead and it will feature iphone 11 style frame so if you have an iphone 11 the new or the so-called upcoming or will they be coming iPhone flip will probably feature the exact same style as that with the mounting for face ID sensor as well as a interior display for some sorts so now the reason why Apple is taking a slightly bit longer to come up with these plans is you know that I, Apple likes to keep their designs for a reasonably long time like the iPhone X for instance that generation of phones has now lead to now even iPhone 11 so there's iPhone 10 then followed by 10s and now the 11 so it has been three full years or technically four full years of the phone having the same exact design with only minor refreshes so this is basically Apple's philosophy in the way they design your phones. They design to last, but not to last an extremely short time, but quite a reasonably long time, like four years. That's a reasonably good time ready for a phone to last that long with about the same design. So what John leaked was basically whether or not Apple are making a foldable phone that's number one and they are making a foldable phone and number two that the designs of the phone will be based on the iphone 11 that's all he leaked but then he quickly debunked it but he totally cut it off like immediately after more and more people started asking more questions because he doesn't know or technically he might know or he doesn't want to give too many of too many rumors off at the moment but that's where we are now for those diehard apple fans out there if you're waiting for the iphone flip you probably have to wait a bit longer but it is coming i know i'm walking i'm looking at you guys i know it's coming i know it's coming so the rog phone 3 appeared on n22 benchmark just recently with tenaa re getting some of the specs in so we do know that the phone's dimensions will be 171 by 78 by 9.85 millimeters which is pretty thin honestly but the one thing is that it would not have a notchless design so it's basically having bezels top and center you can see on the photo up there already there is no notch at all but we don't that it weighs only 240 grams which is pretty light but also pretty heavy it may be liquid cooled it may be water cooled according to what past phones like are like like the rog phone 2 and the rg phone one or past like gaming phones also were mostly water cooled and now that brings us back to the screen now they would have a 6.59 inch no notch display which is a amoled display obviously when you're gaming you need the best range of colors but also it may feature a 144 hertz display 
which is something that's very welcome in the gaming community world of gaming phones if there is any gaming community out there which i'm definitely sure there is it'll feature a 6000 million power battery Ooh, wait 6000 million powers that's a lot of battery i mean like basic phones only have 4000 this one will feature 6000 million power battery with 30 watt quick charge so that's not like regular fast charge no that's 30 watts quick charge on 600 6000 million power battery now the one that appeared on the n22 benchmark page was a 16 gigs of ram model so 16 gigs we're now in computer ram territory already 16 gigs of ram 512 gigs of storage that's half a terabyte of storage but there will not be space for expansion as they said there won't be an sd card slot so for those out there who use an sd card slot to expand it I'm so sorry but they don't it, it won't be there no it won't be there but it means that it will be lighter by three grams or so i don't know but then it will feature Android 10 but probably by that when it comes out it probably have Android 11 already pre-installed into that device and not only that the benchmark score was pretty high at 646,310 which is a pretty high score considering that that phone is running a clueless chipset we do know that it's clocking slightly higher than the Snapdragon 865. Usually the Snapdragon 865 is clocked at around 2841 megahertz. Well you do know that this phone is clocking at a sublining rate of 3.091 megahertz. So that is 0.2 of a megahertz more usually than the Snapdragon 865, which leads to believe that there is probably a Snapdragon 865 plus on the horizon plus on the horizon and that's period like look we don't know what processor it is but we do know that it may be an 865 plus we may not know if it's an 865 plus we do not know yet it's probably still in the future to come but more to come on that soon as well as they this asus decided to actually tackle the camera department which is usually lacking in these gaming focused phones usually these phones will have great specs great screen everything great except for the camera which is always holding it back from people switching from their main phones onto a supposed gaming phones now they would say now that the rear camera is having a 64 megapixel main camera so it's not the best but it is a step up from what usually it has and a 13 megapixel front facing camera now this will have a tree camera design at the back so it has a tri camera setup at the back we don't know the rest of what the others is but we don't know that the main camera is 64 megapixels and some other features is that they're finally bringing face id into the phone no picturesque face id an actual face id system as well as an in-screen fingerprint sensor which is a plus welcome to those of the gaming community who wish to buy a gaming phone maybe this is a phone that tips people over or more people are going to actually change to a gaming phone this may be the phone that starts everything we don't know we don't know the fact that it takes on most of the boxes high refresh rate display at 144 hertz a subliminally fast cpu 865 plus probably say 865 plus it is getting an updated camera at a 64 megapixel main shooter which is already like a lot better than what they gave in the last generation of phones and a very high n22 benchmark score with a humongously big battery and a lightweight so if you're a gamer i don't think you'll be caring about notches but then the screen is there you got a good screen everything is there is whether or not it's actually true and if ASUS can actually deliver this tier specs in this phone, I would legit really be pleasantly surprised and probably actually worth taking a look at. Like, really. It's really on the horizon. It's close. Depends on when is it gonna come out or is when is ASUS gonna announce it. Hmm. Times and tensions. Oh yeah. 
Now we're gonna come up to the very last piece of news that we have for you right now. And now this one may be a bit less important to those people who are outside the US, but I still like to incorporate it into the news. I also don't know why, but it just seems right. But if you're looking for a budget phone, pop up and above, self promotion for my budget phone video if I watch that but if you're in the US and you're looking for a budget 5G phone this phone may be the, the phone for you the upcoming Samsung A71 5G is set to be the cheapest period cheapest period 5G phone out there in the market when it launches on Friday it will be the cheapest for the time being and it will be by T-Mobile then if you go with a plan it'll be about five hundred dollars so five hundred dollars for a 5g phone now the specs are basically the same it probably have a, it has a snapdragon 720g it has eight gigs of ram and then it comes as a storage as a 128 gig storage as advertised usually the same as what you get in the usual a71 device so all it has is 5g but it doesn't have the traditional 5g it has a emm wave 5g signal which is currently not being used within the us yet but it will be rolled out slowly so if you want a phone for the future 5g but not using 5g yet it just doesn't make sense I mean, think about it. If you were to get a 5G phone, of course you only use 5G ASAP. But you get a 5G phone with 5G, but in a format or a way that is not used in the US right now. What is the point of that yet? Like, what is the point of buying that phone? Hmm. Makes you wonder whether or not you should get a 5G version or not the 5G version because they're basically the exact same. But this is just the cheapest 5G phone. And 5G is the future, but not the future yet. And not, just saying, not all countries have 5G yet. Like, not all countries. Singapore hasn't even stepped foot into 5G yet. Like, it hasn't been released to the public. The US has been released to the public, but only in certain cities. So, Let's say if you're in Colorado, probably you won't get 5G. But let's say if you're in New York or LA, those major cities, you probably will have 5G signal. But usually it wouldn't be that great. Like if you go to the tree, and then that 5G signal will probably be cut off. So who knows, the 5G technology is still evolving. It's still getting better and better and better. So it just takes time before we can get to that step. So, with that, that brings us to the end for Tech News! I've got to stop doing that. <laughs> but tune in tomorrow for a non-Tech News video where we'll be discussing something else of question marks. I also don't know what we're going to talk about tomorrow. But if you like today's video, please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell as we make a video every single day. As well as if you really don't like it, just, just hit the dislike button. I really don't care. Just hit the dislike button. And I hope you guys enjoy techno feed videos like these as well as tech news. And as for now, Josh signing off.